Hi, I'm Roger Griffiths. We got to part six of this HMC Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live Demo. We're looking at virtual I.O. servers. So these look like uh, virtual machines or LPAS partitions. Uh, it has a great big error in it highlighting this is the input-output server. These are, if you like, the slaves of the real virtual machines and LPAS uh, doing I.O. for other guys. That's their whole job in life, really, network and storage. Um, we've actually got one that's switched off in here. I didn't show you this with the LPARS. If one is switched off and we uh, highlight it and take the actions, we'll see activate is the first thing we'll see on here. And if we just click yes, uh, we get the default action is to activate and we just hit finish and it'll go off and do that operation. Let's quit out of here. If we take one that is actually running at the moment and do actions, then the list up in here is restart and shutdown. Similar sort of thing with the virtual, um, the actual LPARs themselves. Right, if we look at the uh, the information, we get the properties, looks much the same except it's the virtual I.O. server version in here. Uh, it's a little bit old. If I go for my um, Emerald machine and its virtual I.O. servers, they should be, yep, they're on the latest version, good. Just double checking. Um, and we can come out of here, we have the same pop-up for the uh, the uh, amount of CPU, memory, network and storage we have as we have for the LPARs. Um, and the same graphs in here. If we actually drill into one of these guys, then we find there's a little bit less in here of the things we can do. We can't do live partition mobility of a virtual I.O. server, for example. So that's how some sort of things have disappeared. And um, we don't have um, virtual disks on the VIO server. It's actually what's providing the virtual disks to the uh, client LPARs. So this is a little bit simpler down in here. Um, we've got general properties in here that we've seen before. And um, we can then click on the processor, the uh, CPUs. We've got a similar sort of uh, operation in here. And then we've got uh, memory access, uh, 8 gigabytes for our virtual I.O. service. is fairly typical if we're using shared storage pools. Physical adapters. Now, they do have physical adapters, don't they? Always. Uh, they. This is what they're going to virtualize. So it's got a fiber channel, it's got a RAID that it's actually booting off, and it's got a network port. Fairly typical for ours. Um, if we had more adapters in our machines, then we could have a dual, one, dual versions of all these, of course. Um, if we look at the hardware virtualized I.O., um, here's the SRIOV, and we could uh, add a port if you want to to that, like we had a brief look at. Uh, with our virtual machines. Um, up in here we've got the capacity diagrams, we've already seen those, and we've got the VO server operations. Profiles and consoles are all the same in here. Um, there's a nice little one in here, it says perform virtual IO server, but next to this it says command. Um, can I? No, I can't. So um, in here we click this operation, we could actually run a command on the VO server just quickly um, iOS level for example um, oops I need to do a uh, an OK there rather than a carriage return and it go off and run that and we get back the results and um, we actually already knew that because we could see that in the uh, information couldn't we and it's, it's in here okay um, shut down the start and all sorts of things. So there's less we can actually do with a virtual I.O. server. All the configuration for the VO server as it connects it to a an LPAR, that's done automatically. We did to we'll go to the the LPAR or the virtual machine and we we'll say we want to add a disk. Uh, the HMC will add whatever's necessary to the virtual I.O. server for you. So you're not going in here creating a, a virtual SCSI and assigning a slot number. That's completely automatic in this version. Okay, then that's virtual I.O. servers done. Next up is group tags in part 7.